Good morning and happy Easter to everyone. Welcome to the Garfield Second Ward Sacrament Meeting. We'd like to welcome those that are visiting, those are attending for the first time, and also those that are watching via our live feed. My name is Brother Jake McIntosh. I've been asked to conduct today, and President Benedict from the Stake Presidency is presiding. We'd like to excuse Bishop Bagley and Brother Miller, who are out of town today. Just have two announcements to share with you. First off, general conference next week, so Saturday and Sunday on April 6th and 7th, and then our fast and testimony meeting will be the following Sunday on April 14th. Um, our opening hymn will be hymn 220, Lord, I Would Follow Thee, after which sis Sister Kendra Nelson will give us the opening prayer. 200. 200. Sorry, 200. Thank you. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this beautiful Easter morning. We're grateful for the chance that we have to meet today as a ward and for the building that we have that is so close to our homes. And we're so grateful for the rain and moisture that we've been receiving and the good it does to our, our earth. And we're especially grateful at this time for our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're grateful for the love that thou has for us that thou hast sent him to us, that we may know him as our savior, that we may feel his love for us. And especially at this time, we're so grateful for his atonement and his resurrection that has allowed us to overcome spiritual and temporal death, that we may be together forever as families and friends. Father, we love thee. We pray for those who are speaking today that they may be blessed with the spirit. We're grateful again, for the many blessings that we've received. And we say these things in the name of our Savior, in Jesus Christ, amen. Is
Is the audio okay in the back? Can I get a thumbs up? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> we have a couple items of ward business. Um, we'd like to, we have called the following and proposed that they be sustained. So if they could please stand when their names are called. Um, we've called Christopher Hunt as a, an advisor in the Deacon's Quorum. Scott Jensen as a primary worker and Amy Jensen as a primary worker. All those that can sustain th these brothers and sisters and their calling, please do so by the uplifted hand. Any opposed by the same sign. Thank you. We will now prepare for the sacrament by singing hymn 190 in memory of the crucified, after which the sacrament will be blessed and passed.
and sisters for your reverence during the sacrament. The remainder of our program will go as follows. Pretty excited for today. Our, um, we will have a piano solo by Sister McLean. Following Sister McLean, we will have an intermediate rest hymn by the congregation of 199, He is Risen. Following the intermediate hymn, we'll have our speaker today, Sister Jan Chadwick. Following Sister Chadwick, the primary will bless us with a musical number, Gethsemane. And following the primary, our closing hymn will be hymn 135, My Redeemer Lives, after which President Benedict will give us our closing prayer.
Good morning, everyone. Yeah, um, so I am like so nervous. Um, I wanted to introduce um, our, myself. I am Jan Chadwick, and I'm married to Ty Chadwick. And we moved here um, a little over a year ago from Colorado. Um, I grew up in Driggs, and I met my husband, um, Ty, at Ricks College. We got married and moved to Colorado, and we lived there for about 31 years. Um, we raised our family and started a business there, and then we decided it was time to come back to Idaho. We have four married children and eight grandchildren. And I'm so happy that I've got two of my um, kids here with their families, so it's really kind of a special Easter. And I'm really looking forward to this summer when I'll finally have all of my children together um, for the first time in two years. Um, Ty and I are also the Trek coordinators. Um, if you don't recognize this, going to the Trek activities by now, but we're not going to really talk about Trek today. We're going to talk about Easter. Um, on this sacred Easter Sunday, as we gather to celebrate the most significant event in Christian history, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, I feel deeply humbled and grateful to stand before you to share insights into the profound significance of this day. As a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we hold dear the teachings of our beloved prophets and apostles. We have illuminated the path of discipleship and deepened our understanding of the atonement and resurrection of Jesus Christ. President Russell M. Nelson, our prophet, seer, and revelator, has emphasized the centrality and the resurrection in our faith. He stated, because of Jesus Christ, our sins can not only be erased through sincere repentance, but our physical bodies can also be changed and made immortal. This truth underscores the transformative power of the resurrection in our lives. In um, words of Elder Jeffrey R. Holland, the literal resurrection of this body that was so loved and so brutally slain but still retained its uniquely individual identity and in return from death to life is the crowning event in the life of the Savior. Elder D. Todd Christofferson has also taught, because Jesus Christ was resurrected, all of us will be too. We will rise from the grave and be reunited with our perfected immortal bodies. Elder Neil L. Anderson further emphasized this point by teaching, the Savior's resurrection assures us that his life is not ended but merely changed. In our own resurrection, we will take upon our immortal bodies, free from pain and infirmity, and experiences a fullness of joy in the presence of God. The resurrection story has immense power in its simplicity and yet profound implications for all mankind. It is a story of triumph over death, of hope over despair, and light dispelling darkness. Allow me to share two stories from General Conference that beautifully illustrate the Easter message. I'll try to get through them without a lot of tears. Um, during April 2015 General Conference, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland recounted the touching story of a family who faced the tragic loss of their young son. Despite their <clears throat> profound grief, they found solace and peace through the hope offered by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Their faith in the Savior's promise of eternal life sustained them through their darkest hour and filled their hearts with the hope of the future. Elder Holland's story goes as follows. In a small rural cemetery where the winds often blow hard, a Latter-day Saint family was burying their seven-year-old son. We had a who had been tragically killed in a farming accident. With the little boy's body already lowered into the grave, family members and friends stood in a semicircle around a small hole. Hearts were broken and tears were flowing as each person wrestled with a devastating loss. In the, in the middle of this poignant scene, the deceased boy's grandfather, a strong, rugged farmer, did something unexpected. He stepped forward and asked if he could sing a song. With tears streaming down his weathered face, he began to sing with a voice quivering with emotion. The song he chose was, I know that my Redeemer lives. As the sweet strains of the hymn filled the air, something miraculous happened. 
The winds, which had been blowing fiercely all morning, suddenly ceased. The air became completely still as if nature itself was listening to the testimony being born. In that sacred moment, the grieving family felt the tangible presence of the Holy Ghost bringing comfort and peace to the troubled souls. As the last note of the hymn faded away, the grandfather, with a voice filled with conviction, declared, I know that my Redeemer lives. Because he lives, so shall my grandson. Additionally, during the October 2001 General Conference, Elder Joseph B. Worthlin shared an inspiring account of the resurrection, illustrating a profound impact it had on our lives. His story goes as follows. One of the most beautiful testimonies ever recorded about the resurrection was given by a woman who had lost her son. She said, I do not believe that any mother has ever wept over a child as I did. I could not be comforted, and I cried and cried and asked the Lord why he should take my child from me. One day she heard something like a voice that said to her, be comforted, my daughter, thy child lives. She said, I don't know how it was, but the words came to me. I rose from my bed and went downstairs and out of the house and into the fields. And there I walked all day long, crying to the Lord, asking him to tell me more about my child. She received a great deal of comfort from the Lord. She said, I have seen my child since he died, and I know he lives. I do not ask anybody to believe it. I know it. And then she bore a powerful testimony of the Savior. I know that Jesus Christ lives. I know that he has a body like ours. I know that he has been resurrected and lives. I know that he, has a he is a personal Savior to all who will believe in him and follow him. I know that he loves us, and I know that he cares for us, and he will help us if we will put our trust in him. Elder Quinton L. Cook spoke of the eternal significance of the resurrection, saying, the resurrection is not only a historical event, but also a future promise. It provides assurances that injustices and iniquity of mortality will be rectified in the merciful plan of our loving Heavenly Father. Um, President Dieter F. Uchtdorf expressed the transformative power of the resurrection, stating, through the resurrection, Jesus Christ conquered death, offering us the opportunity to conquer our own spiritual and temporal challenges. His victory became our victory. His promise of eternal life became our hope. Reflecting on the resurrection, Sister Julie B. Beck, former Relief Society General President, shared, the resurrection gives my, my life meaning, direction, and the opportunity to start over no matter what the circumstances. Such profound insight underscores the transformative power of the resurrection in our individual lives and collective faith. In John 20, 13 through 18, it says, and they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom, whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, Tell me, where hast thou laid him, and I will take him away? Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to the brethren and say unto him, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. It was Jesus Christ, alive again. The knowledge was too wonderful to contain. Her faith propelled her into a joyous sprint as she ran to tell the others. It is a testimony that still propels people today. You can know just as she did that Jesus Christ lives. Because of him, everyone will live again. If we follow Christ, we can find true happiness on earth and look forward to eternal life um, in, in the life to come. As we ponder upon these teachings and testimonies, may our hearts be filled with gratitude for the infinite love and sacrifice of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Through his resurrection, we find redemption, healing, and promise of eternal life. 
In conclusion, Easter is a sacred time for us to reflect on the profound meanings of the resurrection and its transformative power in our lives. May we continue to deepen our understanding and appreciate this glorious truth as we strive to follow in the footsteps of our Savior. And I say this in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'd like to invite the primary to come up, please.
Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the opportunity that we've had to be here to fill the spirit of the music and of this great talk on the Son of God, thy Son. We're grateful for him, for his eternal sacrifice for us, and for all that that means to us, for the opportunity that we have to also rise from the dead as he did, for the opportunity that we have to draw near unto him and to develop attributes like him. And one day to have the opportunity to live with him again. We are grateful for this day, for the opportunity that we have to commemorate his great sacrifice. We pray that we may remember his sacrifice on a regular basis, that it may be a blessing to us throughout our lives as we ponder on it and understand it. We say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> 